Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, last week played itself out much as I expected. We did get our first warning uh, on Friday. The score went down to 42, which is not bad, but it is significantly lower than it has been for the past several days. It was in the 60s, now we've come down to 42, which is the lowest level in a while. And we do have a kink now in the curve going back towards zero. Um, this is really to be expected uh, ahead of the election. The markets are basically deflating and as, yes, as uh, last week's uh, theme, which was XLK, shows, that is the sector that is giving up most of the gains and uh, basically retrace to its longer term moving averages. I don't think there's anything much to worry about as yet, but we will analyze what levels are the important levels to step up and buy. In deviations, we have for the first time bust the central line, but I think the, uh, the movement down is going to be contained. I will uh, analyze the exact levels in SBX later. Uh, what is important to note is that all the sectors uh, have significant support just below uh, and therefore the only sectors which can really hurt you are sectors like XLB which can retrace uh, quite a bit more and uh, to a lesser extent now XLK and I will uh, have a look in detail at the NASDAQ at what the uh, next buy levels are having finally bust that 11,060 level that I consider so important and then it kept on bouncing up from. Um, I don't think that the um, the weakness into the election is going to be too great or that it's going to persist for a long, long time. But it's normal that the market should now uh, do very little to uh, test the downside, i.e. very little upside for the next several weeks. And certainly I don't expect there to be a significant uh, rally in the averages before the middle of next month. Uh, XLY, I think, is also one which could come under pressure over the next few uh, few weeks, uh, simply because Amazon is very weak, and I think now the chances of another stimulus package with uh, uh, Mrs. Ginsburg having died over the weekend and uh, the Republicans pushing with a nomination to the Supreme Court um, I think the, the odds of a um, uh, of a of another package are now quite low, and that will probably be uh, you know sort of in the price as of Monday morning. I don't think it's going to be a huge difference, but certain sectors like XLY could now extend to an ABC to about these levels that we saw back in uh, May. Uh, so that is a distinct possibility and therefore I think the market is going to, going to continue being on the back foot next week with really XLY and XLK as the sectors which could continue to bleed. The bond markets really are offering us no clues whatsoever. The two stands remarkably stable uh, between 53 and 55. Uh, I am now you know, beginning to be concerned that we could start pushing up towards the 60s. So really any uh, any couple of closes above 57 basis points, let's say, uh, would indicate that the pressure is building for a move towards the high 60s and up to this level, which is 74, 73, 75, let's call it. Um, I don't expect it to go that far but it's showing the first few worrying signs. In Europe, I mean, basically nothing happening. Uh, it's completely desert dodo. Uh, the only levels to trade in the bubble are at 61. I think uh, it's unlikely that we go beyond it. And really in the bunds, the level is 
points here, 39 to 40 basis points, which equates to about 172 and a quarter in the futures. Um, un, you know, unless we start breaking those points, there's really very little to write home about. Um, I don't see that happening. I really don't see why it would happen. We've been told, uh, you know, innumerable times that we are not going to have anything uh, bearish happen here, that the central banks are still uh, committed very much to their policies. And if that is the case, I think the really good risk reward in bonds is not found until 172 and a quarter in the futures. The rest of the US yield curve is as flat as a pancake three month to five year absolutely no movement i mean the fed has euthanized it uh five tens you know if you get a one basis point move it's a big deal so you know we can forget about those parts of the yield curve the five thirties is the only one that has a decent chance of movement how this ginsburg death is going to affect it on monday i um, you know it should flatten it but the, the flattening every time it happens, it's rejected. Um, and that is what uh, is beginning to worry me. Uh, unless we can recoup this 109 to 105 level uh, and even stay uh, uh, neutral there, I think the trend uh, after we've uh, you know, got rid of this one or two day episode is going to be towards a steepening towards 140. Um, it um, it seems that the long bond is and the ultras are quite a bit weaker than the front end, uh, and that people want to get out of it. So to me, uh, I think the steepening is more likely, and that steepening is actually going to push XLK even further in. And it's going to make the uh, uh, the the indices weaker than they need to be because I now I think that bonds and indices for the next several weeks are pretty much tied at the hip. Um, I unless the bond market rallies huge, I can't see XLK uh, lifting its head from uh, the current uh, weakness pre-election. And that is going to keep the largest sector in the US in check. Uh, and if that is the case, I really can't see the indices rallying very much. So what we are looking for is really good levels to buy them at, because then we have uh, more than just a faint hope that XLK is going to rally, but we have support for all the indices, for all the sectors and therefore a much better risk reward level. As far as the US dollar is concerned, it's giving us absolutely no clues. Um, what to say about a market which closes um, just about every week within a tick of where it opened uh, and right on top of 118.40. Um, very difficult. I think there are there is still a very, very good chance that at some stage we test the, this 115.5 level, which is my excellent risk reward to go long. But there is also a very good chance that we just keep on going up towards the 122, 123 level without testing it. Uh, therefore, it's very, very difficult to tell. If we look at the DXY, um, very much the same thing. It just keeps on being neutral at these support levels. It keeps on saying that any kind of spike into the 95s is likely to be reversed and therefore it's very good risk reward to be short up there. But it, you know, if we look at, you know, this trend line and this trend line here are, you know, are equivalent. This is daily and this is weekly. Um, it's just saying any market which just consolidates just on top of it, the danger is that at some stage it just falls through it. But I reckon that that move now is being left for after the election. Uh, and until the election, we are going to meander in th this same uh, range that we've had. 
I still think that the path of least resistance for the dollar is down um, because I think the yield curve is going to be contained uh, and I think that any backup in bond yields is not going to be that bad, certainly not at the front end, it's more likely to be a back end thing uh, and if that happens I think the, uh, the dollar contains itself to uh, maybe seeing this 95 level but the risk reward is at some stage for a complete breakdown down towards the 88 level. Unfortunately gold is not giving us any clues either. Um, it is basically doing just exactly what I thought, stay below the highs but while the bonds don't give us you know any real direction and while the uh, and why the US dollar is so stable why should gold do very much I think the first real support which we're looking for is 1860 on the weeklies and if this is an ABC which it could be in everything it could be in bonds it could be in gold it could be in the dollar it could be in uh, equities uh, you're really the the target that you're looking for is somewhere between 1810 and 1763. I find it very difficult to see it below 1763, but the first buy level is 1862 for a bounce for sure. Um, so I will now look at uh, the uh, individual bonds in more detail to see if there's any clues there. Uh, but uh, unless the bonds start trending, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for gold to give up much room certainly not below below this 1810 level which is the previous highs as well um, it makes sense that everything retraces back to longer term moving averages just ahead of the election doesn't it one thing that has been fairly obvious for the past few weeks is that the long bonds don't really want to know about testing the downside again they keep on you know keep on being sold and, you know, uh, I, I am very uh, conscious of the fact that, uh, the, uh, that we, on Monday we're going to have some kind of reaction uh, from the odds of the stimulus package, uh, a new stimulus package passing in the House uh, being removed. Uh, before the election, I, you know, there is a chance the long bond is strong. Uh, but if that uh, strength is negated very quickly, I think that we are uh, more likely than not to get a surprise move to the upside in yields towards the 163. Um, I this is still all very contained, okay? This is nothing really to worry about fundamentally, but that is what is going to uh, depress and keep equities depressed. I, I really cannot see that equity and bond yields can really deviate that much for that to happen, for equities to be significantly stronger than bonds, we need to have growth. We need to have expanding, not multiples, but expanding earnings. Uh, and at the moment, I really can't see that happening anytime soon. So as long as uh, US long bond yields are uh, headed upwards, I don't see any chance of equities sustaining uh, reasonable rallies. I think it's all going to be technical reactions from oversold levels. Uh, but I will be much more bullish for US equities from this 163 level because I think the odds of breaking it and sustaining it are very, very low. Um, in which case, you know, th the market has retraced the 200 day moving average and it's awaiting developments. To me, that sounds very reasonable ahead of a US election. What do I mean by bonds and uh, indices being tied together? Well, this is the 10 minute price, price action from Friday. I think it's very uh, telling. Let me explain it to you. Okay, so in the morning from, you know, from first thing, London morning, the uh, bonds do slightly better. They tick up a point. Uh, this is the uh, ultra uh, and the same thing happens to ES it goes from 3340 up to 3360 odd 
US comes in, sells the bonds, same thing happens to the ES. So what happens then is you know, there's a complete breakdown here in ES, there's a spike down, uh, people try to buy the bonds on the back of the spike down in, um, in, in the indices, some sort of rotation into um, into safety, as it were, uh, ES stabilizes, retraces some of the uh, of, of the oversold condition from a very good level. As you remember, I said all week 3280 to 3300 is going to be a wonderful level for a bounce. It bounces. What happens to the long bonds? Smack down to the to new lows. Um, Basically, what it's saying is that these two markets are actually at the moment tied. There is no reason, you know, it's just a question of the speed at which one goes down, at, at which one leads the other one down. And it's the bonds basically leading the ES down. Um, basically, what they're doing is deflating XLK, which is deflating the indices and everything else. While the long bonds keep on going, being sold, and the ultras keep on being sold down, and I think they're going down towards 219, that kind of area, I see very little hope for sustained rallies in uh, the indices in equities. And this is really what this chart is showing. Uh, this is SPY over IEF by the seven-year uh, seven area tens uh, this one is uh, basically since fives and tens are locked this one's going to be far more sensitive so i will look at it less than this one which is tlt 20 year uh, i think it's reasonable to expect us going into the election somewhere around here it's, you know these lows and these highs are very important and we're very close to them and I think that we will just hug this two level uh, into the election. That to me says that bonds and equities are absolutely tied at the hip. Um, if I just uh, put this chart in as well for you to look at and this is TLT over gold you can see how having broken that very important line TLT just does not want to rally against gold and if gold is stable the only way uh, this price can go down is if TLT goes down. Um, therefore I see very very little movement ahead of the election in any of these uh, asset spreads and I'm quite happy uh, selling rallies in in the SPY but also I'm very happy buying it at really really good levels which I will now examine. Let's examine the NQ first because that one's the tail wagging the dog from a monthly perspective on Friday for the first time in a long long time we've broken a monthly low. Uh, we did not close below that monthly low but I don't think that is so important you know, here we are, this was last month's low and we broke it. That is a sign of hesitation and a sign of weakness. And I think we can definitely look forward to in the next few weeks for a move down to this 10,275, which is a 0.382 retracement of the whole move up. These monthly Bollingers, they do matter. Um, you know, it, it can sustain the move up for quite some time but um, and, and be hugely overbought. But at some stage it does come back. And that is the first target from that we are given from the monthly. If we look at the weeklies, we can see this huge band of support from the 0.382 retracement and these previous highs and lows in the weeklies which are between 10,301 and 10,140. I mean this is not such a big difference, is it? it's a percent. Um, so that is the level that I think it's going to be very, very um, auspicious for another bounce of the upside probably all the way up to 10,065. Um, 
I really don't see that XLK is going to get uh, absolutely uh, mullered before the election. That is not something that uh, makes much sense to me. I think this uh, basically deflation of XLK does make sense. Why would you want to be uh, go into the election uncertainty at such overbought levels? Makes no sense either. But on the other hand, I really don't see that it makes much sense to be selling it through these levels. Uh, it looks very good on the weeklies for an excellent risk reward between 10,400 and 10,100. And if we break it down into my favorite 195 minutes for just the US session, we have you know an ABC target again around 10,100 and something. Uh, with a 200 period moving average around the 10,400 level, I think the odds of uh, breaking it and uh, dumping down here and keeping you know, keep on going are very low. I really don't see that happening. Uh, I think this is going to be a very good risk reward area over the course of the next week to two for a bounce back up to you know 11,100. Uh, I think it's going to be a gift down here uh, and certainly something to uh, somewhere to buy uh, call spreads in quite some size. From everything I've said, you can see that I really don't think that SPX can out, outpace um, NQ on the downside. Um, not over the course of two or three days for sure. And it's holding these uh, Bollinger Bands very well. Um, I love the 3271 level. Don't forget the basis against the ES is about 10 points. So that makes uh, ES 10 points lower, i.e. 3261. Uh, that fills that gap. And I think chances are at some stage over the next week we see it. Um, but the shallowness of all this tells me that if we you know, it, it, it's not going to be a quick and sustained move. If we break 32.71 on a closing basis, I think it's pretty much given that we go down to 32.05. Um, so this is, these are, you know, it's, it's a quick stair step. Uh, I think we basically do this and then a stair step here and then we bounce. Uh, but it's something that it's going to take time. I still think that the first level you buy call spreads, probably one by twos, is 32.71. And you can see where the resistance is. Uh, we just can't break this area, which is anywhere now. It's going to start turning over anywhere around 34.15. And really, this is the major resistance around 33.76, coming down about five points per day um, it's very going to be very difficult unless the bonds really lift us for us to be able to break those levels i think we are more likely at some stage to test this level and bounce off it quite fiercely um, simply because i really don't see that the situation in the states is very worrisome at all. I think the deflation XLK is longer term very healthy and I think that this is going to provide us with a very good buying opportunity. First level uh, 32.71, next level down at 3200. If we see that it's you know bite with both hands. I just want you to be aware that on a weekly basis this 32 10, I mean, you know, whether it's 3200, 3210, who cares, is very, very important. This is where this red line, the moving average is going to be next week. And really, you can see how the market on a weekly basis, every time it's dumped through it, it's gone huge. I don't expect that to happen. And you can see here that, you know, it, it never managed to break it until it decided to go a lot higher. So this is a very, very important level. 32.10 in SPX is going to be very difficult to break on the downside unless the bond starts screaming higher in yield, which I really can't see. 
uh, so you can see how important it's going to be to have a decent sized position here for a retracement back up into the 3300s. And finally, the expectations for next week written down for you in tabular form. I'm going to actually post these so you can download them and print them and, and look at them and have them. Uh, this is what I said last week and this is what is the changes um, for this week so you can compare. Um, I'm beginning to think that if we start breaking above 57 in the two stands, there is pressure on the bonds, as I showed you, that will ex ex exacerbate the pressures of 530s and you know, show that the intent is for the market longer term to go to 140. 105 remains the massive level on the upside for me. Um, the, you know, I haven't really changed very much, I've just refined what uh, there is but here is the important stuff first 3271 and then 3200 to 3210 to me that is really really important and only closes above 3365 impress me in the slightest in SPX uh, I don't expect it I think the odds are quite low um, I think the odds are that we trade down to 32.71, up into the 3300s, down to 32.10, and then up into the 3300s, and probably then trade 33.65. I think the rally, if there is going to be one, starts just before the election. I think it's too easy to expect it after the election. Um, NQ, you know, it finally broke the 11,060. It's showing weakness. I think it'll show more weakness. But the 10,200 to 10,400 area to me is very, very important. Only above 11,360 do I think it's showing any strength. Um, and I really don't expect that to happen. Now, the one chart I haven't shown you, but it's quite obvious to everyone, is that EEM and Europe are outperforming the US at the moment. That is obviously a function of bond yields and also a function of what is happening in the US in terms of election uncertainty. So to me, uh, EEM uh, at some stage is, a, is going to be a very good buy, and I think because the weakness in it is being caused by the US. So to me, 42 is going to be an excellent risk reward before the election. Thank you very much indeed and tweet you on Monday.